Now we will study mechanics from a different point of view. Uh, we're going to consider the universe as being composed of a system and its environment. So there, there will be energy transfer between the system and its environment. And the system can be an object, it could be a particle, collection of particles or objects. For example, you can define a system as the region of space inside a car. Now, uh, for demonstration purposes, let's say that we have a constant force applied to a block at an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. And as a result of application of this force, the block gets displaced from its original position to uh, its final position by making a displacement delta r. The work done on a system by an agent exerting a constant force on the system is defined as the product of the displacement it causes and the projection of the applied force on the direction of displacement. So if you take the projection of this force on, onto the horizontal axis, that would be f cosine theta, multiply it with the magnitude of the displacement delta r, then we obtain the work done by this force. As you can see, because we're multiplying two magnitudes and uh, with the uh, together with the cosine of the angle between them, this is actually the scalar product or dot product of two vectors. So for a constant force, we can write this as f dot product with the displacement it causes, delta r. The SI unit of work uh, is because force is in newtons, the displacement is in meters, one newton meter is uh, one joule. So work is measured in joules. Now as a special, special case, you can see that because cosine 90 is zero, if this force is perpendicular to the displacement, we would find that the force does no work. Okay, um, so if we consider all the forces acting on this block, there is the normal force, there is the weight of the block, mg, and there is the force f that we're applying at an angle, uh, theta with respect to the horizontal, I'm assuming there is no friction. The work done by the normal force, because the displacement is perpendicular to it, is zero. Work done by the weight is zero, because the displacement is perpendicular to the weight. And the work done by force F is F cosine theta, delta R. So we find that if there is a finite work done on a system, so W is greater than zero, that means we're increasing the energy of the system. Energy is transferred to the system. If we calculate the work done on a system to be negative, that means the system does work on its environment and energy is extracted from the system. For example, if you have um, a a gas inside a container uh, that uh, the, the gas basically expands and pushes the piston above uh, to expand, we find that there is work being done by the gas, not by the environment on the gas. So then we would see the work done on the gas would be negative. That would be a typical example. Now, uh, we don't always have a constant force applied to the system. There could be a force that depends on the displacement. So if we have a force component on the x-axis varying with x with this function, uh, we can concentrate on a small displacement delta x where the force is more or less constant and we can multiply f with delta f value at that point with delta x to find the work done by the force in that region. So if we repeat this procedure from the initial position to the final position, we're basically calculating the area under fx curve uh, that is going to be the force, uh, the, the work done by that system. So this is basically going to turn into a Riemann sum. It's the limit as delta x goes to zero, we multiply fx with delta x from xi to xf, fx value at that particular uh, position. This is basically the definition of the integral 
x initial to x final it's going to be a definite integral of fx dx which is the area under fx x curve so we find that in general the work done by a force from in, is from in the integral from initial point to the final point f dot product with displacement vector dr the incremental displacement vector uh, this is basically called a path integral so we're going to uh, take the dot product of f with dr along a certain path going from an initial position to a final position now uh, we classify forces as conservative forces and non-conservative forces so how can we uh, find if a force is conservative or non-conservative well, if a force can be written in the form uh, minus gradient of a potential energy function that is a function of uh, the position, where the gradient operator is defined as partial derivative with respect to xi hat plus partial derivative with respect to yj hat plus partial derivative with respect to z k hat. Why partial derivative? Because we have three variables. And u, x, y, z, this is a scalar function, it's a function of position, and we call this function the potential energy, potential or potential energy function. So if the force can be written as minus gradient of u, it is minus du del u del x i hat minus del u del y j hat minus del u del z k hat. So if I can write this force in this form, or in other words, I can say this force is derivable from a scalar potential energy function, then it is called a conservative force. Now, if we have a conservative force, what is the work done by a conservative force? Well, we have just seen that the work done is the integral from initial position to final position, f dot dr. So for f, I write minus gradient of the potential energy function. So this will be from initial position to final position, minus del u del x i hat dot product with dx i hat, uh, minus del u del y j hat dot product with dy j hat minus del u del z k hat dot product with dz k hat because we have an incremental displacement vector dx i hat plus dy j hat plus dz k hat and basically we find that this is just minus the change in the potential energy function which is ui minus uf so work done by a conservative force is equal to the initial potential energy minus the final potential energy or minus the change in the potential energy. This is known as work potential energy theorem. So for conservative forces, the work done by the force is minus the change in potential energy of the system. Now, this also implies that the work done by a conservative force is independent of the path taken. Why do I say that? The work done by the force, the, uh, which is given by this path integral, only depends on the initial and final values of the potential energy. So it only depends on what the initial point is and what the final point is and the values of the potential energy function at those points. It doesn't depend on how I go from the initial point to the final point. So in this case, it's independent of the path taken. The work done is independent of the path taken. Now, on the other hand, uh, if I calculate the net force acting on the system and calculate the net work done on the system, it's the net force dot product with dr vector integrated from initial point to final point. Because Newton's second law says the net force can be written as mass times acceleration, it is m dv dt dot product with dr. So this uh, dt we can write it as m dv dot product with dr dt as well it's uh, dr dt is basically the velocity so it is m v dot dv 
which is uh, 1 over 2 mv square from initial to final point 1 over 2 mv final square minus 1 over 2 mv initial square we define kinetic energy of the system as 1 over 2 mv square so that this becomes the change in the kinetic energy of the system so the net work done on a system is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the system uh, kf minus ki which is called the work kinetic energy theorem now, if we combine work potential energy and work kinetic energy theorems for a conservative force, we will find that the work done on the system is minus the change in the potential energy, which is the change in the kinetic energy, so that delta K plus delta U would be zero. So the change in the total energy of the system, kinetic energy plus potential energy, must be equal to zero if we have only conservative forces acting on the system, where we define K plus U as the total mechanical energy of the system. So we can restate this result under the influence of conservative forces, total mechanical energy is conserved. Delta E mechanical is zero. So the effect of having a conservative force on the system is to have a decrease in kinetic energy uh, resulting in an increase in potential energy or vice versa. A decrease in potential energy resulting in an increase in kinetic energy. Now, as an example, let's consider the spring mass system. We have a block that is attached to a horizontal spring. Here is the equilibrium position of the spring, x equals zero. When the spring is stretched by a distance x, we find that there is a restoring force acting on the spring, trying to take this uh, block back to the equilibrium position of the spring. Let's assume that we have no friction to start with. So when a spring is stretched from its equilibrium position, there will be a restoring force. It's given by Hooke's law. It's uh, proportional to the displacement from equilibrium uh, by a proportionality constant k, and it's opposing the displacement from equilibrium, so it is minus kx. So x is displacement from equilibrium, k is our spring force constant. So what is the work done by the spring? Um, if I go from minus x max to 0, uh, from minus x max to 0, I have the integral minus x max to 0, the uh, restoring force dot product with dx. Now the restoring force, remember, is acting in uh, minus kx i hat direction. Uh, and uh, we have the displacement is in plus uh, dx i hat direction so we have integral from i minus x max to zero uh, we obtain minus one over two k x square uh, minus x max to zero and this is going to give us uh, one over two k x max uh, square and uh, since uh, we have the net force acting on the system m times uh, acceleration x component with no friction this work done uh, is also equal to the change in kinetic energy of the uh, system so since uh, the restoring force is a conservative force uh, the work done is equal to minus the change in the potential energy so we find that uh, the work done by the spring uh, is going to be 1 over 2 k x max square which is the change in kinetic energy minus the change in potential energy so what do we see we going from minus x max to zero the kinetic energy increases to uh, by an amount 1 over 2 k x max square the potential energy decreases by an amount 1 over 2 k x max square and delta k plus delta u the change in the mechanical energy of the system must be zero because there is no friction so the work done by the spring going from zero to x max is minus k x i hat dot with dx i hat so we have displacement vector dx i hat and the corresponding restoring force in minus kx i hat this gives us minus 1 over 2 k x max square as the work done by the spring that means the kinetic energy is decreasing the potential energy is increasing as i go from 0 to x max so in general this restoring force which is minus kx 
can be written as minus del u del x so that the potential energy function will be 1 over 2kx squared. The maximum value of the potential energy is 1 over 2kx max squared, which is equal to the maximum value of the kinetic energy. Now you can see at minus x max, uh, the instantaneous velocity will be zero, the potential energy will be maximum. At zero, we will have zero potential energy, maximum kinetic energy, maximum speed of the block, and at x max, the kinetic energy will become zero, the potential energy will reach its maximum value. So the sum of the kinetic energy plus potential energy, the mechanical energy, is a constant of the system. It's a conserved quantity. Okay. Now, as for the sign of the uh, work, during the motion from zero to x max, the work done by the spring is negative. The work done on the spring is positive. Uh, kinetic energy from the block of mass M is transferred to the spring to increase its uh, potential energy. So if I go from an initial position Xi to the final position Xf, uh, the dot product of restoring force with displacement gives me 1 over 2 Kxi square minus 1 over 2 Kxf square, which is minus the change in potential energy because the uh, restoring force is a conservative force. This is the work done by the spring. Uh, because it's the, going to be the work done by the spring on the block. If an external agent applies a force, which is equal to minus the restoring force, then we would find that the work done by the external agent would be kxi hat dot dxi hat uh, 1 over 2kx final square minus 1 over 2kx initial square. This would be external agent uh, work done on the system. So uh, in this case, we find that the total mechanical energy is conserved since the restoring force is a conservative force and there is no friction acting on the system. Uh, friction force is a good example for a non-conservative force. So if you have coefficient of kinetic friction non-zero, we would find that this mechanical energy of the system, total mechanical energy, would change as, this, uh, as the block moves. It would be, the change would be non-zero. Uh, and this change in the mechanical energy will be equal to minus the integral, uh, the magnitude of the friction force dx. So th there will be a decrease in the mechanical energy of the system and this energy would basically be transferred to heat uh, by friction. So it would be uh, heating the surface and the, uh, the contact point, uh, the, the block, uh, when we have the friction acting on it. Okay, so to summarize, we talked about uh, work uh, done by a force it's uh, in general uh, defined as the path integral initial point to fi final point f dot dr. Now the value of this path integral will only depend on initial and final points if it's a conservative force because we have for conservative forces work is equal to minus the change in potential energy work potential energy theorem. A conservative force can be written as minus the gradient of a potential energy function and the work done by the conservative force is independent of the path taken. And a special case for a constant force acting on the system, basically we just have to take the force and displacement dot products. If the force is perpendicular to displacement, it has no work done on the system. If the work done on the system is positive, energy is transferred to the system. If it's negative, energy is extracted from the system. And when we calculate the net force acting on a system, uh, the work done by the net force is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy of the system, where kinetic energy is defined as 1 over 2 mv square. The total mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy of the system, which is a conserved quantity if we have only conservative forces acting on the system. For example, there is no friction acting on the system. And we took spring mass system as an example where we have seen that the restoring force given by Hooke's law minus kx has a corresponding potential energy 1 over 2 kx square and because 
if you have no friction acting on the system, this would be the only conservative force acting on the system, the only force acting on the system, the total mechanical energy would be a conserved quantity, only this mechanical energy would be transferred between potential and kinetic energy as the mass moves in between the two extremum uh, points. And uh, we, if we do have friction, friction force is a non-conservative force, uh, as with any other non-conservative force, this would cause a change in the mechanical energy of the system. It would act, always act to decrease the mechanical energy of the system.